Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ. June 16th, 1858, it is the state convention uh, for the Republican Party in the state of Illinois. And to close the convention, Abraham Lincoln is the keynote speaker. And, and Abraham Lincoln would deliver one of his most famous speeches, um, words that we've heard many times attributed to him after that, when he gave his famous speech in which he quoted scripture by saying, a house divided against itself cannot stand. And when he was when he spoke these words, he was talking about just a severe division in our country. And he said that that division was reaching what he called a state of crisis. And he was right. Because three years later, in, in 1861, people could not agree. And, and that rivalry of thought had grown so great that it would literally lead brothers to kill brothers uh, in the American Civil War, one of the deadliest and saddest tragedies in American history. When Jesus spoke these words, a house divided against itself cannot stand, uh, it, you know, it was accounted by Mark in chapter 3 and Matthew chapter 12, and he had just been accused of casting out demons in the name of Satan. And Jesus responds to this accusation pretty practically. Uh, he said, how can Satan cast out Satan? That just doesn't make sense. And in, and in Matthew, as he keeps going, he says, you need to judge a tree by its fruit. If Jesus is of Satan, he's going to bear fruit of Satan. But what kind of fruit was Jesus bearing? He was, he was healing sick people. He was casting out demons. He was feeding the hungry. That's not the fruit of Satan. He goes on in verse 35 to say, a good man out of the treasure of his heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. Essentially what he's saying is, you know, evil people are going to, are going to do evil things. Uh, Satan and evil people cannot be divided against themselves. And in the same way, good people are going to do good things, and good people cannot be divided against themselves. Paul, Barnabas, and Mark, they were all good men with, with good treasure in their hearts. And in Acts 15, Paul's about to leave on his second missionary journey. And in verse 37, it says, Now Barnabas wanted to take with them John called Mark, but Paul thought it best not to take with them the one who'd withdrawn from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. And there arose a sharp disagreement so they separated from each other. Now, we don't know why Mark left in Pamphylia. The, the scripture doesn't tell us. We don't, we don't have a lot of insight into that. We do know that at, at one point, Paul rebuked Peter uh, to his face for the treatment, for the way he was treating uh, Gentiles. And, and, and we're told that even Barnabas was led astray by that hypocrisy. And, and so based on that, some scholars have have speculated that perhaps Mark left Paul in Acts chapter 13 to go warn other Jews of, of Gentile conversions. And essentially, we know that Paul was concerned with Gentiles, and perhaps Mark was, Mark was concerned with Jews. And that, that may or may not have been, but there, what we do know is that there was a sharp disagreement, and they both went their separate ways both proclaiming the gospel. So, so who was right? Who, who would God side with? You know, if it was, as some scholars suggest, uh, was, was, was Paul the right one uh, saying it was the souls of Gentiles that mattered? Was, was Mark the right one saying that the souls of, of Jews are what mattered? I think they were both right. And I think they were both wrong. They were both right in that they were good men with good hearts, and they got on boats to go spread the word. That, uh, that is the fruit of a. That is not the fruit of Satan. That is a fruit of a good person with a good heart. But they were both wrong because they allowed pride. They allowed their personal views and opinions. They allowed Satan to divide them as brothers. You know, you wonder how much more effective could they have been together. 
I heard someone say today, and I, and I totally agree with it, that Satan is roaring like never before. He's letting his voice be heard in, in our country and in our world, like, like we've probably never seen in our lifetime. And it brings him incredible satisfaction to see the church divided against itself, to see the church divided against itself. You know, in my house, we don't agree on everything, but we aren't divided. We're, we're family, and, and your family's probably the same way. You, you understand that blood is thicker than water, and, and that you understand that our love for God and our love for each other has to come first, and we have to stand together. In God's house, we are a family, and we are brought together by blood, by the blood of Christ. And we, and, and, and we don't, and we won't, and we can't all agree on everything all the time. But our love for the Lord has to come first, and we have to stand together, bonded in a very special unity. Nearing the end of his life, one of Paul's last requests was that Mark be brought to him because Paul said, He's very useful to me in ministry. That's 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. Paul put aside his differences, and Mark did too, for the purpose of furthering the gospel. And you know, to finish up the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 12, he says in verse 36, I tell you on the day of judgment, people will give an account for every careless word they speak. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Satan would love for our careless words. He would love for our careless jokes. He would love for our careless social media posts. He would even love for our well-thought-out arguments and our well-thought-out opinions to divide us and cause separation and cause us to give, have to give an account for which we cannot answer. Can you imagine if Paul hadn't reconciled with, with Mark and, and had to give this, this account for what had happened? Paul, give an account of your dispute with Mark. Well, we disagreed. We couldn't be effective ministers together for, for the cause. And perhaps there were some who were lost that could have been saved because of our pettiness, because of our, our prideful devotion to our opinions. Maybe this interaction with Mark is what motivated Paul to write the words that we see in Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, when he says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Christians, we can disagree without being disagreeable. Satan has launched an assault on us like, like we've never seen before in our lifetimes. We have to stand together, unified in our love for each other, putting aside differences for the greater good of his cause. We must not let our house be divided. Let's show the world that the love of God is so much greater than our opinions. You know, it brings me so much joy when I see you showing the world that, that what we have is so special that we can be united without always agreeing. When I see our family bonded together with cords that cannot be broken, in humility, let's count others more significant than ourselves. I love you so much. Have a great week.